Rhodes had opportunities and convert. Temple finds an avenue, soars in, a chance at three. Everything working for the Warriors. This is the Westmoreland on the Hardwood Podcast on the Westmoreland Sports Network. Here are your hosts, Jack Ridenow and Sean Myers. And we welcome you into another edition of the Westmoreland on the Hardwood Podcast here on the Westmoreland Sports Network's YouTube channel. Sean Myers, Jack Ridenow, and Jack, we have a big show to get to. The playoffs are on the horizon. We'll touch on that certainly quite extensively. We also have a jam-packed plays of the week. Five plays in this edition. Our team of the week, the Greensburg Central Catholic Centurions girls who have had a terrific campaign. We'll have trivia and a very brief look ahead for what is a little bit of a uh, undetermined schedule for this upcoming week. We'll get into that all momentarily. Let's begin with our starting five, our biggest takeaways. And there's a lot of playoff implications. It was the final week of section play. That means some teams were on the cusp. They're either, now either in or out. Some of the teams that are in on the boys' side, they both come from the same section in 5A. And Trafford is in. Fiske area is in as well. Two boys' teams that certainly uh, deserved it in what was a crazy section all season long. PT securing a spot in a game you did on Tuesday. Fiske area also securing a spot. Greater Latrobe, the team on the outside, looking in. And I think that has, I think, uh, it's, that says a lot about the section, the fact that Greater Latrobe was the team that missed the mark in making the playoffs because they were very good this year. Right. I mean, I know that they fell to Penn Trafford, but make no mistake about it. The Wildcats had a very strong season. But I think that no matter what, this section, whomever comes out and emerges from it and goes the furthest in the playoffs, they're going to be the most tested, I think, because of the fact that they've all beaten up on each other. We've been talking about this section all season long, Sean, and for good reason, because that top four, five team kind of mesh, it all is a jumbled mess. And and you include Greater Latrobe in there as well. So I think that Penn Trafford, Kiskey area, teams like that, they could very well be setting themselves up for deep playoff runs because they have been going up against really good competition. I was listening to a college basketball podcast the other day, and they were talking about how teams that are in these very good conferences that might not have the greatest conference record, they still will go far in a tournament situation because they're going up against great competition constantly. And I think that's what's going to happen for a team like Penn Trafford, for Kiski area, for Franklin Regional, for Gateway, whomever is going to emerge and go the furthest in that section, I think that is going to be what helps them out is that they were going up against great teams all year long. For Kiski area, the Cavaliers knocked off McKeesport on Tuesday pretty decisively, and then they blew out Penn Trafford. I was kind of surprised. Now the Cavaliers on their home floor against the Warriors. So Penn Trafford was already in courtesy of their victory on Tuesday. This area got in. The team that needed some help on Friday was Greater Latrobe. The Wildcats did not get that. So they knew they weren't going to be postseason bound. They still almost knocked off Gateway. That speaks to the depth of this. But I want to quickly go back to that game, PT and Greater Latrobe on Tuesday. That was kind of a, a win and you're in type of scenario for those teams. What was that game like for you and the, the intensity of knowing how important it was for both squads? You could tell just how both teams were playing that there was a lot on the line and you could tell at times it wasn't getting chippy, I would say, but, but you know, emotion was high and you could tell from both greater Latrobe and Penn Trafford, both just a couple early and one buckets from Ian temple or from Tyler freeze. You could tell the excitement, the emotion that there was a lot that they were playing for. And I know this Penn Trafford team, there's something about them that when the season kind of starting to get to that late stage, they, they, they have a switch that they flip, and all of a sudden, they go on a deep run. They did it last year going into the playoffs. They did it again this year going towards the playoffs. So the, the atmosphere was incredible. It felt like a playoff game. And I think what also was great was that Greater Latrobe never gave up. Even when it seemed like they were completely out of it, they still kept around in it. And I think that's what was so impressive about Greater Latrobe. Every time Penn Trafford seemed to be you know, maybe pushing away a little bit, you know, going up by eight, going up by nine. Greater Latrobe would have a little 4-0 run. And all of a sudden, they were right back into the ball game. So it had a great feel for playoffs. You could tell that there was a lot on the line and both teams were playing for a lot. But I think that for a team like Greater Latrobe, they can't hang their heads too much because I think that they'll have a lot to build on moving forward. And not to mention, they bring back a lot of key players for next year as well. Well, that leads to a couple of segues to a few of our other takeaways. 
We'll get to the one about controlling your own destiny versus needing help momentarily. But for Greater Latrobe, the boys miss out. The girls get in, courtesy of their victory against, fittingly, Jack Penn Trafford. And going back several years, I think it was back-to-back years, maybe 2018, 2019, something like that, that Greater Latrobe and Penn Trafford played, win in your in scenario for the final regular season section game on the girls' side. Penn Trafford won both. Wildcats were left out. Now it's a little bit of a reversal of fortune. Penn Trafford was already in, but the Wildcats needed to defeat the Warriors to get into the playoffs. They did so. Greater Latrobe won so pretty convincingly, actually. I don't know if you saw the picture. Their first-year head coach, Mackenzie Livingston, apparently said, if we win and get into the playoffs, I'll jump in the pool. If you've ever been to Greater Latrobe, there's the pool uh, kind of like on your way up to the press box for the basketball uh, arena, if you will. And so she and the entire team jumped in the pool to celebrate getting into the playoffs. Uh, a big accomplishment. Now, they actually forced a three-way tie with that win. Greater Latrobe, Ben Trafford, and Thomas Jefferson. So all three of the teams get into the playoffs. So there'll be five out of that section, Oakland Catholic and McKeesport as well. But that's pretty cool for Mackenzie Livingston and her squad, certainly earning their way in, uh, coming down to the wire, but they are in the dance as well. Not to mention in her first season as the head coach too, right? I mean, that just the fact that she's able to do that and the fact that she's getting them into that position, and not to mention the way that they finished the season, I think is so impressive. I remember that they were our team of the week earlier in January. They had won about five or six in a row, and then they lost four straight after that. So you're sitting there thinking, okay, they're back to level ground, but they're not trending in a great direction. Then they win four of the last five, and I think what's so impressive about the win against Penn Trafford is they were coming off a loss to Thomas Jefferson, another team that they finished in that three-way tie with. A heartbreaking loss. And and they're able to bounce back, right? And and I was reading something on Twitter, I think that Coach Livingston said after the game, just how much energy and focus there was on the team after the loss to Thomas Jefferson because they knew what still was ahead. They knew that they still had some control of their destiny, so they couldn't hang their heads for too long, and obviously they were able to rebound back. So I think that this team is humming. They're they're really clicking at the perfect time. I know that earlier in the year they were hit by injuries a little bit. They were still kind of out of sync, but they're starting to gel together at a perfect time, and I know that team bonding has been a big kind of calling card for this group as well, and you can tell that the chemistry off the court is starting to spill over onto the court. So those teams, as we mentioned, Penn Trafford, Thomas Jefferson and now Greater Latrobe. They're in out of 5A Section 3, but missing the cut out of 5A Section 1 is Franklin Regional because, Jack, as you know, you saw firsthand, they did their part, but they didn't control their own destiny. They needed some help. They didn't get it. So they ultimately finish a game out, finishing at 6-6. Six and six. Woodland Hills and Ben Penn Hills, both at 7-5, and five, get the third and fourth spots. That said, what Bernie Puchka's squad was able to do after just kind of a miserable start to the season they should be awfully proud of their second half performance. Yeah, you know, it was kind of a tale of two seasons, right? All in one. And again, I think that you look at Angelina Brush coming back into the fold after her injury, and there was a spark that was kind of starting to get fused together and put together. And then the Panthers started rolling, and you could tell that her coming back into the lineup gave kind of a little bit of reassurance, took the pressure off of a lot of players, but it just was... I think too late. I think it was a little too, it was too little too late. And ultimately they just could not get into that situation. But like you said, Sean, they should be really pleased with how they finished out the year. Not to mention they put themselves into a position. Hey, they took care of what they had to do, right? They had to get a win against gateway. That's what they did. They took care of business outside of that. You kind of, if it's not in your control anymore, it, it you leaving it up to destiny. It is what it is. So I think that the Panthers, they can't be too hard on themselves because they do bring back a lot of key players to next year's team that were very successful this year. So I think that, you know, this Franklin Regional team, they might miss a couple players. Obviously, Angelina Brush not being in the fold next year will have an impact. Gabby Keo down low as well, but they're going to still bring back some players. They're going to bring back Madison DeRigi, who I thought did a phenomenal job in place of Angelina Brush when she was injured. You bring back Torn Fulton, great size down low. You still have a lot of players that will be returning for Bernie Puchka. So I don't think that this is a year that they should look at and, and kind of scoff and shake their head. They should actually be very pleased with and say, you know what? We've got a lot of momentum out of this season to carry into next year. Well, momentum is an interesting word because in one sense, the Norwin Knights girls have momentum because they found a way to win the games. But on the other side, they really kind of sputtered in some of these late season victories. 
they kind of survived upset bids, to be honest, against Pine Richland at Pine Richland. And then at home against Seneca Valley, I had the latter of those. They found a way to win. So there is something to that. They know 6A, those are two playoff teams. It's not supposed to be easy. I was wondering after that game, would Norwin be the number one seed? Well, I think they're going to be the number one seed now because Peters Township had been perfect. They had kind of a head scratching loss, uh, which means that Norwin will almost certainly get the number one seed. They should be the favorites. Is there any concern for you or should there be for Knights fans that they've maybe already played their best ball earlier in the season and now they're, you know, not necessarily playing 100% Norwin Knights basketball, albeit still finding a way to win? I think that it can be kind of a cause of concern for teams that maybe don't have the experience that Norwin does. I think that's what it is with this Knights team is they have so much experience. They've been knocked around this group of seniors. They have tasted defeat in very heartbreaking ways. And I think that they know exactly what to try to clean up. And not to mention, I mean, when you've got a coach like Brian Brzezki, he's going to find ways to adjust. He's going to find ways to to figure out what's going wrong. And let's face it, right? I saw them play against Hemfield. They did not look great. They looked a little out of sorts. We can chalk that one up to senior night. Okay, whatever. You know, a lot of emotions, a lot of things going on. Uh, you know, Bailey Snowberger leaving the ball game for a little bit with her with a with a with a, a face injury. And then the Pine Richland game, though, I think that is the most head scratching one because of how they dismantled Pine Richland. And I remember we had the game of that one. And they completely ran away with that one against the Rams. I think that was actually, they were coming off a stretch where they were holding teams under 30 points. They had held Hemfield up 30 or two under 30 the game before, and they did it at Pine Richland. And then they only beat Pine Richland at Pine Richland by seven. So, and again, the, the Seneca Valley, I think, was actually a very good team this year. I think that they kind of started to sputter a little bit towards the end of the season. But the Pine Richland game would be one that I would circle and say, what, what happened here? I don't think it's a cause of concern because this is an experienced group. They've been around the block and they know how to rally each other in these situations of going very deep into the playoffs. However, I think that if you are Brian Brzezki, you have to keep this team so locked and loaded because when you start out of the gates like that, it's hard to keep going like that and not feel like you're losing steam. And right now, people on the outside might be thinking that the Knights are losing steam. And uh, one thing that almost certainly they will be the number one seed now because of that Peters loss. I think the major benefit to that is in all likelihood, Peters, North Allegheny, 2-3, so if the Knights take care of their business, they won't see those teams or one of those teams until the championship. Because I, I think the last thing that they wanted, whether they would admit it or not, is to have to go through North Allegheny potentially in the semifinals again. That's where they got tripped up by the Tigers last year. I think they'd feel a lot better if they meet NA in a championship game. Of course, remember that legendary championship game about a decade ago. Final takeaway for our starting five, Greensburg Central Catholic. Another milestone for the boys. It's Franco Alvarez who gets to 1,000 points in his career. And I think that they've got an argument for the number one seed there. We talk about the Norwin girls, ECC boys. They're in at least that conversation. It might go to Aliquippa. You give the benefit of the doubt to defending champs. But the Centurions, for their purposes, they've done everything they need. And Franco has been a big part of that. Well, not to mention, you know, to kind of build on the point of them being the number one seed, they're the only 21 team in the classification. They're the only team that's 12 and 0, and they've got wins over Penn Trafford, who's a 5A playoff team. They've beaten Hemfield, who's a 6A team. They've beaten Yawk, who's a playoff team. They've beaten Greensburg Salem, who's two classifications higher than them. So, I mean, again, if we're looking at this as a resume builder, kind of how, you know, NCAA tournament is looked at and you look at their quality wins. Those are four or five very quality wins, not to mention an unblemished section record. So I think that, again, obviously, I'll equip as the defending champs. You have to give them their their respect there. But the way that GCC has played this year, I mean, it's hard to argue against them. And for Franco Alvarez hitting the 1K mark, Tyree Turner's hit the 1K mark. You've got that one two tandem and then you've got players like Braden Riley, Liam Gallagher, Braden O'Rourke that are just those really nice kind of filler pieces that spot up. They do what they need to do to be that extra complementary factor to those two in Alvarez and Turner. I mean, I think this team can can win the whole thing in, in 2A. I really do. I mean, this team, especially with, I think, you know, what what stands out to me the most was that, that win that they had against Sarah, I believe it was, at home. Very close game. Yep. 
and you could tell it was back and forth, back and forth. A lot of teams would fold in that scenario. And, and who had the winning basket, by the way, Jack? Franco, Franco Alvarez. Alvarez. And if I'm not mistaken, he only had four points that whole game. That's so, correct. you know, even in, in situations like that, he is still giving teams problems. But when you've got Tyree Turner leading the charge, I mean, he's the type of player where, you know, if I'm a guy that's sitting on the bench on that team, I'm kicking my feet up and I'm saying, you know, we're we're in good hands with Tyree Turner running the show. Well, we will have certainly much, much more when it comes to the playoff seating, the matchups, all that all throughout this upcoming week. Make sure you check out the website, westmorelandsports.com. We'll now transition to plays of the week. we got five of them to get to, and we'll begin with the Penn Trafford boys as the Warriors secured their playoff berth with their victory at home against Greta Latrobe. And in Temple was a big part of that push, including this and one that extended the PT lead in the second quarter with Jack and Mark Katarski providing the commentary. And it's Boss that finally rips it away. Latrobe's had opportunities, can't convert. Temple finds an avenue, soars in, a chance at three. Everything working for the Warriors. That's a big time play. That's a really big time play. They were able to fight three point blank misses by Latrobe on their end to get the rebound and Temple really made a play. You could tell that it was just such a playoff atmosphere and the emotion on Ian Temple, I think just is a perfect way to describe how much that win meant to Penn Trafford. We continue plays of the week with the Dairy Area Boys and the Trojans offense was scorching in a lopsided win against Ligonier Valley on Friday. Nate Papuga notching 42 points in that victory. Among his highlights was a deep three late in the third with John Flickinger and Bob Lasinski on the call. Third, third quarter has been very sloppy. Eight turnovers. Nope. Pollock can't connect. Here comes Wozniak back two on two with Angus. Gets it to Brady. Brady to Papuga. Three pointer. Splash down. <laughs> Thirty-five for Nate, and a foul going to be called on the Trojans. As you see, the feed and the touch. By Nate Papuga has had a great, great season that certainly continued against the neighboring Rams. We'll continue plays of the week with the Norwin girls, and the Knights survived a home upset bid against Seneca Valley on Thursday, thanks largely to some suffocating defense in the fourth quarter. Bella Ferno and Ava Christopher were paramount during a sequence that gave Norman the lead and then gave the Knights another possession, as detailed by myself and Roger Down. She should have gone straight to the hoop. Another double team and another steal. It's Christopher, one on one, and she scores. And the Knights do have the lead on the first field goal by Ava Christopher. And now Ferno all over it, and it's a hell ball. Possession favoring Norwin. Knights first lead since it was five to four. I think that was the turning point. The defense really ratcheted it up. Seneca Valley tried to go to a little bit of stall tactics in the fourth. It did not work. The Knights put the pressure on. They took advantage and they never looked back. We'll continue plays of the week with the Hempfield area boys and R.W. Dornan had been sidelined with injury for the Spartans for the last couple of years, really. But he enjoyed a special moment on senior night against Baldwin as Dornan scored the first points of the game with myself and Roger setting the scene. A special moment for him and Baldwin has agreed to do this as well to get this game underway. Yeah, I think it's a great vision of sportsmanship by both of these teams, in particular the Fighting Highlanders for allowing this moment to happen. And hopefully all things will work out. Laws to Dornan. Dornan shot up and good. That's a cool moment there for a senior. Jack, I know that was a video that got a lot of attention, rightfully so. It was really cool to see. Uh, first time I had seen something like that where Baldwin conceded those two points. The Knights then allowed Baldwin to score to make it, you know, basically even up. But uh, for Dornan, that's a moment he won't forget. And then I saw firsthand Bill Swan's expression, how much that meant to him and how much RW means to him. So really, really cool stuff there. We'll conclude plays of the week, not with the Westmoreland County team, but rather with the California University of Pennsylvania men because it came against the Westmoreland County team. The Vulcans produced not one, but two highlight reel dunks courtesy of Bryson Lucas at Seton Hill in Greensburg. 
on Wednesday as he bookend the second half with spectacular finishes in leading Cal U to the road win as called by Jack and myself. Not a good start for Seton Hill. Mentioned both teams clearly valued the basketball in the first half. Very low turnover game so far. Ball oh, off the mark and a put back slam. Look out, it's Bryson Lucas. My goodness. I feel like he could have put his elbow in the rim if he wanted to there, a la Vince Carter in the 99 dunk contest. That was unbelievable how effortless he made that look. He also was wide open down low, but he said, you know what? I'm gonna go the harder way. Wow, almost ripped the roof off here at McKenna. See, Nils gotta hurry as we near the final minute. Good hands by Lucas. Uh-oh, takeoff time. The exclamation point. Wow. Just an unbelievable job by Bryson Lucas. You've got the putback, you've got the windmill. I don't know what's my favorite, Sean, what's yours? Man, I'll say that the putback dunk was more impressive because it's against the defense. I mean, the other one is a breakaway dunk. You could do whatever if you have the, the high-flying ability. Uh, that was the exclamation point, the windmill, but the, I think the putback dunk set the tone in what was a tie game at the time for Cal. So that very impressive again. We typically stick with Westmoreland County, but that was so good that we had to get it in there, even if it came at the expense of the Griffins. Let's quickly, quickly switch gears. Look at our team of the week. We talked about the Greensburg Central Catholic boys maybe being the one seed, maybe being the favorite. Well, that applies to our team of the week, the Greensburg Central Catholic girls. What a season, 16-5, and five, a perfect 12-0 and 0 out of Class 2A Section 3. And they really, in their last three games, were just as dominant as can be. They knocked off Sarah Catholic in that big showdown. And then this last week against Flairton, they won 77-36. Iona Wade herself averages more than 36 per game. And then they just really decimated Winchester Thurston, 69-20. to They are riding high. We knew they had a great team. They overcame a, a brief absence of Maya Morgan, and I think they're better off for it, Jack. This is a special squad that I think should be the favorites in the WPIL. And certainly, you have to figure they can make a really a deep run in the States as well. Well, I, I'll continue to reiterate it. They're just like Norwin, right? A team that missed the mark last year. They came so close, but then fall at the end. And now they're back reloaded. They bring back so much talent. And not to mention, when you're holding teams to under 30 points going into the playoffs, you are humming. They've got a big test coming up against Peters, which I think will be a great kind of send-off before the playoffs. So this GCC girls team, they're going to make a ton of noise, just like the boys as well. Uh, we've talked a lot about them. Chris Cattell, who I saw, by the way, at Seton Hill, his daughter is recognized on uh, Senior Day on Saturday. He has to get a lot of credit as well. He does have the talent around him. But one, these players want to come play for Chris Cattell. And two, he has maximized that talent. Because sometimes you just say, we'll throw some great players together. It's going to work. It doesn't work like that. You and I both know that. He's made it work. They're really good defensively. We have the, the, you know, the firepower with Gribble and Morgan and to an extent, Avery Davis, who on any other team probably could could easily score, you know, 15 plus points per night. But their defense, that is a buy-in for all those girls, including Kara DePilka and Abby DeLugos. That, I think, is the separating factor for them. And a lot of their credit has to go to their head coach in that regard. Without a doubt. I mean, I think that's, you know, in, in, when you have so much success, it's immediate. Let's look at the players because that's kind of the the product that's being put out there. But there's somebody behind the scenes that's putting that out there, and that is the head coach, right? And and I think that coach Scatell, and not to mention, like you said, they want to come play for him, right? Erica Gribble is from the Norwin district. She wanted to go and play for Chris Scatell. So that kind of right there tells you, hey, you know what? There's something that he's doing that players are leaving already great areas for basketball. Norwin, we've talked about them all year long. They're leaving and they're going and playing for somebody else because of the success that they have there. That speaks volume, I think. Absolutely. And of course, Greensburg Central Catholic is a terrific school. Obviously, they, they with good reason, people travel from quite a distance uh, in many occasions to go to GCC. You and I have spent a lot of time there. It's just outstanding academically. But uh, just to put a bow on this, we mentioned the, f the five losses. This team for a 2A school has gone against absolute heavyweights. And even though it's led to w losses throughout the season, the benefit, I think, will will show through over the next several weeks. Uh, the 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 you mentioned the losses two losses that stand out North Catholic and 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 uh, 
uh, Oakland Catholic, I believe it was. Those two right there, I think they were back-to-back losses. Yep. Those are two instances, I think, where they probably learned the most during this season because when you get to go up against two really good teams in classifications that are much higher than you and it's back-to-back losses, that gives you a lot of time to learn. And I think that they've learned from those win- from those losses and they've turned them into wins, obviously, and they can continue to bookmark that point in the season and say, that was the crossroad that we found ourselves in and we went straight ahead and we've never looked back. And by the way, those losses came with, uh, I think Maya Morgan was out partially for the North Catholic game and then missed the Oakland Catholic game. Maybe it's a different outcome if she is healthy. We'll never know, but we do know one thing. This is a much deserving team of the week, and they absolutely have a full head of momentum heading into postseason play. Let's look at our trivia question for this week. But first, let's look at last week's. We'll revisit last week's trivia question. And it was at the start of last week when we last talked to you that one Westmoreland County boys team had clinched a playoff spot despite having a losing record at the time. Which team was it? Now, the record has changed, but I believe it still holds true. Only one Westmoreland County boys team is in the playoffs with a losing record. The answer, the Mount Pleasant area boys who were at the time seven and nine overall. That gets us to this week's trivia question. And it was a historic week at Manesson as Lorenzo Gardner scored 64 points in a game on Friday, setting a new school record for boys basketball. That also ties the third most in WPIAL boys basketball history. Who also scored 64 points? And a little hint, it came against a Westmoreland County team a little bit more than a decade ago. Feel free to read out, reach out to us on X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, any other method. Uh, Carrier Pigeon to Jack's house if you want to do that. Let us know the answer. Lorenzo Gardner scored 64 for, for, Ness, for Manesson. Who did he tie all time? with 64 points. And again, it came against a Westmoreland County opponent a little more than a decade ago. Lastly, Jack, a look ahead. And quite frankly, we don't have a lot to discuss because until the brackets come out, we won't know any of the playoff matchups. We do know that there's a few notable games on Monday. These will not count in terms of the playoff seating because they're doing the brackets a little bit earlier this year. They're going to come out Monday afternoon. So any games that take place on Monday won't factor in. That said, there's still some value in these games whether it be a playoff uh, primer or whether it just be kind of local bragging rights. On the boys' side, there's going to be some bragging rights when Norwin plays at Franklin Regional. Obviously, the Knights are not postseason bound. The Panthers are. Bell Vernon area at Thomas Jefferson. Albert Gallatin at Derry area. All on the boys' slate on Monday. And on the girls' side, this could be a terrific one. Greensburg Central Catholic, we mentioned our team of the week. They play the best of the best. They are playing 6A powerhouse, Peters Township. Well, before we put a bow on this one, Jack, any final thoughts as we gear up for the playoffs and what should be a very exciting two plus weeks of action? I can't wait. That's all. I I just can't wait. I'm so excited for all the basketball, all the storylines, all the different teams. We've got teams that want to get back to points that they were at last year and go further. Teams that are in the playoffs that aren't normally in. I mean, just a lot of great stuff heading into the next two weeks. So if you're a a Westmoreland County or just a high school basketball fan, you're going to have to strap in. It's going to be a wild ride. Absolutely. And I don't want to steal Dan Flicking or Sunder, but if you followed us in past years, you know that we really weren't able to do a lot of playoff games for any sports. I think that's going to change a little bit here. You saw in the fall, we did some playoff football and soccer. Well, I think we're going to do multiple Westmoreland County playoff games over the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that. Of course, check out our website each and every day. Hopefully we'll have numerous live playoff broadcasts that we'll bring to you over the next couple of weeks leading up to the Peterson Event Center. That'll do it for this edition of the Westmoreland on a Hardwood Podcast. Remember, check out our website, and of course, check out all of our old ep- episodes. They're all archived right here on our YouTube channel. But for now, we will say thank you so much for my colleague Jack Wright and our Sean Myers saying we'll catch you next week. The playoffs will be underway. We'll talk about it all here on the Westmoreland on a Hardwood Podcast. This is the Westmoreland on the Hardwood Podcast on the Westmoreland Sports Network.